Here's how I made a spaghetti western out of paper for my short film Gruff. I needed a TV show that played in the background of these scenes that spoke to the strong, silent type persona of the abuelo. So I leaned into every visual stereotype I knew. Longhorns, the noble sheriff, a kidnapping bandit, saloon, bank, post office, swinging doors, cactus, and of course, tumbleweed. So I got to work. First was figuring out how many buildings I had to build to make up Olden Town. So I sketched them all out and sourced as much scrap cardboard as possible. Four of the seven buildings were designed to be your typical rickety wooden western buildings, so I lined those with strips of brown crepe paper and went to town aging and weathering the paneling before adding all the fun details like the signage, the windows, and the doors, which then had to be aged again to look as rundown as possible. Now with the more traditional adobe style buildings, I wanted them to look like they'd been there for generations and were built with the same earth that they stood on. Still they had to get aged and weathered to look cohesive with the rest of the town, but altogether I felt like like this main street already started telling a story of its own. All it needed was some townsfolk. I wanted to explore a slightly different style for the characters than those in the main film, so the people of Olden Town got really square, stocky shape language to reflect their stern, sturdy personas, while the villain of the show got a super sharp and thin and wiry design. These characters came to life primarily through stop motion, because I wanted this show to feel a little older than the puppetry style of the main film. But for some shots, no animation was necessary, as I could puppeteer their arms or props off camera. Speaking of props, they always have been a favorite thing for me to make, and it's no different at this scale. I had such a blast making these tiny guns for the main characters of the show, and just wondering how each of them took care of their weapons, or maybe didn't. Or with this skull. It was so fun to try and find a watercolor paper that kind of already looked like bone, but still looked like paper, and just washing and dry brushing and washing and dry brushing till it looked right. It's not every day you can really focus up close on a prop that you've made, so I had to work in these shots, even if they're super short, because I think props are their own kind of characters in some small way and can really help tell the story. Now, it did kind of break my heart to have to make the whole show black and white in the final film, but I think it was the right choice as it provides a better contrast to the vivid color of the real world in the film. And while filming in color also gives me more control over the shades of gray within the short, it also means that I could release a full color version as its own little three minute short film. So be sure to check out the details on how to watch Bonita and the Bandit, a gruff story in the description below. I'll see you there.